We have risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Scholars Wrestling Show, episode 306. I'm your man behind the microphone, Scholar Jeff. Joining us this week is the one and only Scholar Tarek, the Scholars Wrestling Party Champion. How's it going tonight, sir? You know, with you reminding me that we're at episode 306, 10 episodes later, we should do a Stone Cold Steve Austin tribute episode on episode 316. I'm all for it. Works for me. But knowing our luck, it'll be a projection episode. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, in Brian's case, you're already ten, you're already like 10 episodes ahead of us when you're drinking your burr. True enough. It's true. It's true. Yeah, as previously mentioned. Just go, we should all just buy Steve Weisers and just be drinking Steve Weisers on episode 316. Are, oh. are we going to drink Steve Weisers like Steve Austin drinks Steve Weisers <laughs> on camera? Not in this room, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, not, not, not where I'm at either. I, I think we're going to have my a side. I think we're going to have an outside episode to drink those Steve Weisers the way they were meant to be drank. <laughs> no, that's it. No. Or we can just do it the cleaner way and just get some Broken Skull IPAs. No. True. Spoken like someone who has not have a Broken Skull IPA yet. I haven't. I will save you one when, if you, when and if you come by for SummerSlam. The, of oh, course, the one and only... The Scholar Brian. The incentive is now there. It's it's good to be back. It's uh, last few weeks have been rough, but now we're here to talk some good old fashioned fucked up wrestling. There you go. <laughs> it's the American way, apparently. But before we get too far ahead, we would be remiss Wouldn't if we didn't kick this show off the right. Dream. <laughs> More the American dream than the American I way. Want, I don't want du- I don't want Dusty Rhodes associated with fucked up wrestling. <laughs> That's oh. Well, speaking of effed up, let's kick things off the right way on this show with a little bit of something we like to call backstage news. You are absolutely right, fool. We will go right ahead and peek behind the curtain that we all do every week and check in on a little. Backstage news. 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 Apparently, we're going Ultimate Warrior, man. (laughs) True serenity is in not knowing what's going on, but proceeding anyway. Serenity now. (laughs) Serenity, man. (laughs) Great canceled TV shows, man. Uh, anyway, <laughs> all five of you are going to get that. Anyway, we could we would be remiss if we didn't mention this uh, earlier this week, as I'm sure you all saw. Uh, Kamala unfo- tragically passed away this week at the age of 70. Uh, I have to admit, this is one of those ones I'm not too surprised about. I knew he was in ill health for quite a long time. Uh Again, he was he was a big boy, and he this one just came out didn't really come out of nowhere, but it's just it. I, I was not shocked, sadly enough. He, yeah, it's like he was a big guy. Okay, he lived the way the wrestlers lived back in the eighties. Okay, and and I've I've been reading the Twitter sphere. Over the, and and this is the problem with online and all these today. They're like they're not thinking about the man. They're not thinking about whether he okayed it or not, and all that. They're all like Kamala was a racist gimmick, and all that. And it's like no shit. <laughs> he was he, he, but it's it's one of those. He owned it. Okay, he owned it. He did it to the best of his ability. Okay, and and the one thing I remember him for is the uh, what was it? Uh, WrestleMania seventeen, 
Mm -hmm. WrestleMania 17 when he's doing the Kamala gimmick and it's all over Will William Regal's desk. <laughs> <laughs> All that before the uh, before the legends battle royal. I, I oh, mean, yes. battle royal. oh yeah! Oh yeah! It's it's one of those. Yes, okay. It's a racist gimmick. Everything he did during the time that he was wrestling, you could you could call out as as somehow being racist or anything like that. But the dude owned it. He obviously okayed it. He wouldn't fucking do it. If if he didn't if if he wasn't okay with it, and it's it's one of those gimmicks, okay, that actually upsets people when he does inevitably pass away. So it's like the out the outpouring of support when when it came out that Kamala had passed away. Okay, means that he meant something to a lot of people. Okay, mm -hmm. whether it was whether the gimmick was that's that's the problem with the way these people work today in in this landscape and all that of like Kamala would not work today. The moment they absolutely that, wow. The moment they put that on TV today, okay, WWE would have to close. People would be that pissed off. <laughs> okay, that's it. So, so it's one of those like to all those people who are suddenly coming out about it on Twitter now. I'm like, dude, shut the shut up. You yeah. You loved him 20 years ago. You loved him when he showed up at WrestleMania 17. Now he passes away. And in the climate we and in the political climate we live in today, okay, you're going to bring up this crap now. No. Okay, remember him for what you enjoyed him doing. Okay, he was never meant to win championships. He was never meant to, but the role that they put him in okay he excelled in a major way and people remember that and love him for that remember him that way don't bring this shit up now now that he's dead oh look at the gimmick that they made him play ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho shut up <laughs> yeah and unfortunately it seems to me like this is because of the gimmick and the and just you know how times have changed I get the impression that Kamala is going to be one of those guys who never fully gets appreciated for all that he actually did in the business. Once you take a step back and you see how long he was active, all the matches he had, and just how much he contributed to the show, and how much of a sport he was just for putting up with all the crap and just being as active as he was. And all who knows how many talents and benefits that... Uh, that he would have had that a lot of the, a lot of the mainstream fans just don't know. Uh, I think I heard something about he was a singer or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, it's, and the stories I feel like I uh, we haven't dug enough, and there's still a lot of things that we will probably not get to see about the man himself in, during this lifetime. Yeah, here here's all you need to know about Kamala. Okay, he worked with Hogan. When Hogan was the top guy in the universe of wrestling, okay, that's it. That's all I need to know. Hmm. Okay, if you get that big, okay, doing that gimmick, okay, <laughs> that's it. That's all. That's all I need to know. Okay, Kam mm -hmm. Kamala these days would not work, but back then, ultimate foil for a guy like Hogan. Okay, so it's it's one of those. He was a product of his time. He was one of the top bad guys during that time. Okay, and it sucks that he's gone. Okay, but it, as as we all know, it's not surprising. Okay, he he lived the way an '80s wrestler lived. Mm. Okay, 
and and his his health has been bad for the last couple of years. Okay, so rest in peace. Okay, and uh, hope hope you uh, hope you have some good matches with uh, Savage and all the all the guys you meet at the uh, Pearly Gates. Fool, any parting shots and thoughts and memories about Kamala? Right now, the only real thing I can remember about Kamala is he'll just be the one that just keeps knocking Hulk Hogan out of his sleep in Mr. Nanny. Fool, <laughs> <laughs> uh, never uh, change. <laughs> honest, and oddly enough, I was thinking with Brian saying the gimmick wouldn't work today, the, the closest thing we ever got to uh, Kamala, like, 2.0 was Umaga. Yes. So... That's the only, that's that's really all I could say. The, he Kamala left his mark in the wrestling industry, and he left his mark on me once again. The guy kicking Hulk Hogan's ass in his dream sequence that began Mister Nanny, and that is something uh, I will always remember him always screaming at the camera no! in the opening title sequence. Because <laughs> uh, I actually. When it comes to actually his actual in ring, I'm not real. I don't real. I'm not really that familiar. I just know of him because of like his appearances and our time growing up. But yeah, he left. He left his mark on the. He left his mark in the business and with the with the people he worked with. And yeah, again, thank you for the mem. Uh, thank you for the memories, even if it's just one and only in a five seconds. Five or two minute scene in a movie, and 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 a, a truffle shuffle on top of a general manager's desk at at WrestleMania seventeen, <laughs> and the rock and the rock and the rock mimicking him with Hulk Hogan in that backstage segment with uh, Hulk Hogan and Kane. That oh, one yeah. time they were yeah. rivaling the NWO. See, now now the memories are flooding back. <laughs> <All right. laughs> So wherever you are, Godspeed, Kamala. See you down the road. Rest in peace, good man. And elsewhere in the world of wrestling, we have an update on the SummerSlam venue, and apparently all future tapings. There are going. Everything is going to be at the Amway Center in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I bet I have, that really uh, grinds your gears, fool. Uh, yes and no. Not so sure if I would want to go down to uh, the Amway Center. Plus, let's face it, they're not going to be have letting fans in, at least not physically. Uh, there has been some rumors going on that, of virtual. Virtu- virtual fans, or they would have people like Skyping in and actually have like faces all all in the crowd or around the arena or something. Uh, it's got. Have I didn't hear that part. What, I did hear about the, the virtual fans. What do you got? I what did hear about the virtual fans. I didn't hear about the monitors. I, I if they I, actually I, do do the monitors, I will basically laugh out loud, roll yeah. on the floor, laugh. I I didn't hear about the virtual fans during the event. I heard about like a virtual fan thing, like they normally do, like Fan Fest or whatever, or the WrestleMania access. I heard that, that one too. But I'm like, how how does that work? Okay, the, the whole thing is okay, the the only difference that this makes is that it makes everything look bigger. It's a bigger venue. Okay, that's it. Okay, it's hmm. not gonna change the way that the tapings and the pay-per-views are run. Hmm. I I'm like the only thing that changes here, it's a different place. Mm-hmm. It's a different and bigger place. Nothing else changes. <laughs> so it's like everyone's everyone's making a big deal out of it. I'm like, what? They move, what is it, like an hour maybe? A, I don't know. A half hour to an hour down the road. Hmm. They move. 
and it's a and it's a bigger it's it's like an arena mm. so it's like okay that's it what what and and if they do start allowing fans back like it's rumored that i that a like AEW is about to do like that's confirmed they're going to start letting fans back in like you're still doing the 25% thing so hmm. it's like it's everyone's making a big deal out of this i don't see the big deal all i see is that you're going to get the same shows run in a slightly bigger arena with maybe a few with with maybe a few hundred to a few thousand people in it whatever it's 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 progress yes but it's but it's still not a big deal hmm. <laughs> full impressions on the, this new crowd thing or what are you expecting to see from this new venue uh, well What I really am expecting to see is just now it's just a better presentation. It just uh, when it comes to like the perform uh, the performance center, it's just you could just tell it's just because it's at a smaller venue. It is just it just feels I'm trying to find the right the right words to explain it. It's it just didn't feel as it felt more house showy than it did. Uh, than it did like on a more mainstream sh uh, mainstream show with like Raw and SmackDown. Um, with this now, it actually it'll be a better presentation of the show. It's similar to what AEW is doing with Dynamite. It's like if they did it at a smaller venue, and now they move to a a, a grander uh, location. It actually does affect the show in a way. They can now have more people involved as the audience instead of just a small handful and it just will just seem bigger it'll just be a bit a uh, bigger presentation so i th i think it would i think it would definitely help in the long run and when it comes to the presentation of the show mm -hmm. because it's still some it's still whether or not they give us great content mm -hmm. but i i think i think it would help mm -hmm. i'm i'm i when you're when Brian, when people are saying it, people are making it as a big deal. Like, how so? I'm, I'm when you were saying that, I'm just going like, why are people like, how it's, are people it's, making a big deal out of it's, this? It's one of those things where it, I've I've been reading the Twitter sphere and I've been reading the message boards and all that, and and the people are like, oh, they're in. They're in arenas now. They're going to start doing better storylines. They're going to start doing all... I'm like, no, that's creative. That has nothing to do with what, with what venue they're in. They're not going to switch up their creative just because they're in a bigger area. Okay, here's the... Here's, and and quite honestly, I'm going to be completely honest. Until they start getting full crowds... In there, as, as I said, okay, it's progress in the right direction, but there's nothing that you can say to me that will make me not believe that you were talking about how she'll feel and how it's going to affect presentation. It's not going to feel like house shows anymore. I don't believe that's true. Okay, until like it's hard at 25% capacity. Let's think of it this way. Okay, I, I would say baseball, but Tarek hates baseball, so we'll go NFL. Okay, <laughs> we'll go NFL. Think of the worst team in the NFL. Think and, and think of their attendance. If it, it feels like a minor league foot, it feels like a minor football match, like a football game, because of the amount of people that they have in the crowd, which is not, which is like very low. Okay. What I, 
I, I, I understand, as I said, okay, progress. Progress is being made, okay? But for me, until... It's, it's WWE, okay? So, it's like, presentation might be slightly better. You're, you're not going to get... Kevin Dunn? As as your as your dude with camera cuts and all that, it doesn't matter how good your presentation is or whatever. It it for me, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you are, but it it, it the for me, the move to the Amway Center is not a big deal because it doesn't matter where you are at this point. Okay, creative is still going to be the same for me. Okay, presentation is still going to be the same. What I mean by presentation is meaning just just the look of it. I mean, if you look at a raw show and it's nothing more than just a big screen and the ring compared to AEW Dynamite, where it's a grand it's it's a grander stage. It has space. It has space to breathe. It it. It looks grand, where when you looked at Raw and SmackDown at the Performance Center, it doesn't feel grand. It just feels like just in a tightly, uh, like feel in a tight space where it just doesn't feel, it just doesn't feel that grand anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't have that grand look. Like that's the one thing I really am giving to AEW shows is when it comes to their presentation and how the show and how the. Uh, set of the setting of the show, with the nice with the nice big stage and two entrance entrance uh, uh, tunnels, it it definitely feels like a grander show because of their presentation of their stage and just their the arena of the the size of the arena. Mm-hmm. When it comes to the performance center, it just feels small and I'm trying to find the right word. Cramped. Cramped. Thank you. It just feels yeah, it just feels t- feels cramped on it just being in such a small location, and I feel just having it at a more open location actually will help with the look of it, not the mm-hmm. not just what the the yeah. content they're gonna sh- they give. Maybe it will be maybe it will be different. I mean, at least now they can like pull an FTR and drive drive into the uh, arena. They can actually do more with it. This is one of those instances where you all we have right now is conjecture. All we have right now is what we think it could be. It's like we it's like you're gonna have to wait to see the action. I because I is is SummerSlam gonna be the first show actually? Because I think they've taped. Raw and SmackDown already for next week, right? So, but, from but what they, if, they actually they actually said on this SmackDown that it's going to be that SmackDown is going to be filmed. They even expressed live at a different location, so it could okay. be SmackDown so, being their first show. It, so it's it's one of those things for me where it's like I'm I'm just saying how I feel at the moment, but. It's it could definitely change after I see like the first show. It's it's mm-hmm. one of those where it's like, yeah, the area is bigger, but I I need to see it to actually mm-hmm. to actually know how I feel. Mm-hmm. So it's like it, yes, it's a good thing. Okay, we're moving to a bigger space. Okay, because let's face it, the performance center was never was never cutting it okay Mm. from the beginning okay from the beginning it was never cutting it Mm. so we'll see how they do we'll see how they do in the bigger space we'll see how they present it we'll see what if if anything changes creative wise but but that that's my deal like that it's uh Everything I've been reading, everything I've been watching, everything I've been hearing, and all that 
I just don't think it's as big a deal as people are making it out to be mm. at this yeah. point in time. Well, well, like so many other things happening in the world of wrestling now, this is one thing, those things, it seems, where we're going to have to ultimately just wait and see how it turns out. But moving on from one of those to another, uh, Fool, I believe you brought it up earlier, uh, the situation regarding the group Retribution moving on to the actual WWE shows themselves. Uh, Retribution, another week, another night, another round of... Breaking windows, tossing bricks, chainsawing ring ropes. Uh, I got to get your feedback on this. What, what, in your opinion, is going on with Retribution? And where could this possibly go? Well, the, to really answer that question is, yeah, is where does WWE think they're going to go with Retribution? And I don't even think they know <laughs> uh, where they're going with it. I mean... When it comes to like how they're being presented on both Raw and SmackDown, they're actually, in my personal opinion, presented better on SmackDown than they do on Raw. I mean, this past week on Raw, all they did was just have footage of them throwing, like I, like you brought up, them throwing a cinder block through a window and turning over a car, and they're just going, yeah, yeah, we're badasses, woo! And when it comes to SmackDown, yeah, they trash the place, they... They pulled a chainsaw on the ropes, which is something I don't think we've ever seen before. So that's actually, it was actually pretty neat to see. And when it comes to SmackDown tonight, uh, uh, right before we record, started recording, uh, they just were more just trashing up the place and locking people in bathrooms with a chair and writing the WWE, spray painting WWE on the look. Lo- with a like a Ghostbusters cro- or right to censor uh, logo in front of it, but when it comes to the, the final end game, it's like when you have even the commentators like, "What's their deal? Why are they doing this? What's their plan?" I guess we just have to see and wait for that one big reveal on what's going on. I, even I even made a joke about it. What was it last week or the week before? Them make. It's like them revealing each member aces and eights style to the finally have oh, do that one big reveal of who's the, the mastermind behind all this. And I, when I'm really looking at it, I kind of think they kind of have to have the big brain that's not that hasn't been shown yet on this. These are just basically the pawns that. We're gonna have that one big reveal of the the mastermind behind this all. Why the and the guy who is really telling these people what to do, being the I guess anti WWE. But as of right now, they're not like they're much more Riot Squad than the Riot Squad ever been. But it's just okay. What's the what's the uh, what's the end game with this one? So. And until we get there, I guess I can't really say anything. I mean, even this past, when I was watching their thing on Monday, I'm just going, okay, they're trashing shit. At least, like, at least have them attack wrestlers. And tonight, they attacked wrestlers. So I'm like, okay, so they're, they're making more of an impact of beating the shit out of people. And it's not just little guys. It's not just like lower mid card talent like R Truth and Akira Tozawa. They they attack Big E. They attack John Morrison, and they done the the stupid backstage stuff where they open the door and there's a guy taking a shit on the toilet. So they closed it and put a chair to prevent that guy from leaving. That ha- okay. They're back to doing that dumb shit. But at least like they're actually attacking people. They're make they're actually now showing okay. Now we're actually doing something. Now what? Are we actually going to get these guys actually talking? Are there, is there going to be a mouthpiece? There has to be a mouthpiece. And like I said, there has to be a mastermind controlling these guys because I don't take any, like, until they reveal, they actually just reveal who these people are, which they probably don't even know themselves. This storyline is just going to be like, <clears throat> all right. So they trashed it again. What? What else? I I did I I do have to say that I enjoyed 
that when they actually started going after wrestlers, all right, they finally looked the part. Like they they looked like they could actually beat the crap out of actual people. Okay, because last week, looking back, okay, these are tiny people who took down a ring. I'm like, okay, how, how, and, and I'm like, how is this any better? What are you going for here? I'm like, there's, for me, there's no interest here because it's like these people, these people that you have in the ring right now, taking down this ring and destroying all this property don't don't look like they could actually take on actual humans <laughs> okay that's it and then I, they come and then they come in tonight and and you got actual people who i believe can take down people like big e and john morrison i'm like okay they have actual they they they, they it definitely looks like they actually gained numbers yeah, because there actually were some pretty big. There were tall people in this crap, in this, like, in these attires. Especially when they had two, one guy throw a referee, even though he kind of threw himself with the referee in the backstage uh-huh. brawl. Between like, last oh. week and this week, okay, last week, I I didn't believe that they could do anything that they set out that to do whatever their mission statement is, whatever. I'm like, this is bullshit. This is going to be, but this week I'm like, okay, uh, all right. Uh, This can go somewhere. Like, uh, like I'm actually interested in this now because there's actual people here Mm -hmm. who I can believe can take down like actual superstars. Anybody could take down a ring. Anybody can throw a brick through a window. Anybody can set a lamppost on fire or whatever. But it's like it's like now I can actually see. Now I can actually see that these guys mean business because now they've got people who can actually take out superstars. That being said, I like before we move on, I'd like to pitch a scholar's quick talk for you. I know it's it's very early. There's a lot of development we need to go through, but gun to your head. If you had to pick a someone to be the leader of Retribution, who would you pick? One name. Go. Uh, this is not a scholar's quick talk. This is one we actually have to really think because. All right. I'm going to say a gonna, really stupid like name right about- now. Because it's like you have to think about it. It's like is there someone from the main roster that's pulling the strings of the NXT, or is it just NXT people saying go fuck this and go? <laughs> I've got I've got one name. I've got two names actually that come to mind immediately. One ridiculous, one not so ridiculous. First one being CM Punk. I know. I know. He was he was a name that I was actually thinking about as well, but it's just that question: Will like would he do it? Probably not, which is making me think of this other name. If it's we're talking about a a group called Retribution and what they seem to be standing for, I'm going to go with. Uh, oh wow, <laughs> I'm blanking on his name, and it's terrible. Uh, Drake Maverick. And all that that implies, like he's sort of the face of everyone who got le- who got released all at once. All this anti-humanitarian uh, stuff. Uh, I was gonna say Eric Young, but he already seemed to have moved on and has legitimate gripes about what's going on there. So right now, I feel like the most he's got, reasonable he's- pick would be Drake Maverick. Yeah, I can't. I can't say Eric Young because he's signed with Impact, so that's not going to work. But uh, out out of those names, and and uh, see, that's this is a hard one. 
Because it's like, it's it's someone in the company. I know that. They're not going to go out of bounds and bring somebody in. As as much as we'd like it, as as much as we'd like it to be CM Punk, it's not gonna happen. I got a wacky idea. After just seeing what how things are going on SmackDown right now and who made appearances, what if it's Joseph Park? No, he's he. Yeah. They made him too much of a comedy character to actually okay. Okay. make it. In- if it was going to be someone on the show who's just basically, uh, I don't know, I don't know, shit. Uh, Maybe it was a hard time to bring this w- up. Knowing WWE and the big reveal would probably be just extremely disappointing. Like, it would probably be Baron Corbin. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go the other route. And and be like maybe it's someone like big that's coming up from NXT. Maybe it's Adam Cole. Not uh, after he gets uh, uh, after he gets off of this thing with Pat McAfee. Okay, what else does he have to do on NXT? Mm. So I, I kind of see him coming up with Undisputed Era. The, mm. What if they're all in on it? But, I don't know. But if I I'm don't really think so. Thinking, I think they would be their own yeah, entity. I can see I can see it being Drake Maverick. Or I can see I can see it being any one of the guys that was released. Okay, that hasn't signed with anybody else. Hmm. So it's like Rusev hasn't signed with anybody. What's he doing? <laughs> streaming that's what he's doing is he streaming revealing he had sex on the tank at wrestlemania <laughs> so in other words he's keeping busy no matter where he's going exactly this this is well, a question have someone like Anna to come home to yeah yeah this this is not a scholar a scholar's uh quick talk question okay. this is a uh this this is something you have to really think of because there's no obvious answer here. All right. Well, what? shame on me then. But uh, moving, speaking of NXT and the happenings there, uh, a surprise return this week. Uh, we got Velveteen Dream, which oh. I personally was very shocked that they brought him back. Uh, uh, Fool, it seems like you had some pretty strong opinions about this too. Oh, I don't really have any real strong opinions on it. I mean, yeah, I mean, the reason he had to be off TV in the first place is controversial on its own. But honestly, maybe they'll just. Uh, didn't they say he's having a match with Finn Balor as like that last chance to be in the number one contender for the North American title? Finn Balor needs to murder him. Yeah, I'm like, just have this be an excuse to bring Finn Balor back now that, uh, 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 oh God, I'm now that, uh, Loomis is out. Mm. Just yeah, bring Finn Balor in and have him win it. Here's the deal. Okay. It's as, as we've said before. Okay, the first time he gets accused of what he was accused of, okay, you take it with a grain of salt. Okay, the second, the third, and the fourth time that he's accused of the same thing by different people, okay, you have to... Okay, this isn't an isolated thing where you can be like, oh, that. You're you're making a bullshit. Oh, oh! You got five to ten people saying the same, <laughs> mm-hmm. saying the same thing. They're all making it up. It. This is to me. It sets a bad precedent, which is something that the WWE is known for. Mm-hmm. So I'm not exactly surprised about it. But it's one of those you have 
you have multiple counts of people coming against you and saying that you were predator to underage people. Mm. So it's one of those, if you bring him back, you better kill off the character and then release him. Mm. Because if, if he goes, if he goes any higher than that, then the shit storm that's going to oh, come he- down. If he wins, if he beats Finn Balor and is put into this North American title match, yeah, we're, we're going to be, that WWE is going to be like, what are you doing? The shitstorm yeah. that's going to come down on this company from all angles, if this guy gets into any high profile shit, okay, it, it's, it's not good for the company. And I hope that they know that. But if they don't, Okay, we're gonna find out in in the next few weeks. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a bad look all around. Legitimately, okay. Velveteen Dream should be on the unemployment line like Jimmy Havoc is mm. on the mm-hmm. AEW side because okay they. Jimmy Havoc got accused of what of being abusive and all this kind of stuff. They sent him to rehab and then was like, it's not worth it. Time to go. Okay, this is the second time this guy's been accused in less than six months of this kind of behavior. So it's like, it's not an isolated incident. It's not something you can brush off and put it to the side. Okay, people are going to remember this shit. People don't remember Jimmy Havoc. Jimmy Havoc's not a big name. Hmm. And and that was taken care of right quick. Okay, Velveteen Dream is a big name on the NXT scene. Has been for about a year now. Year and a half, hmm. maybe. Hmm. And, and, and you're going to put him right back hmm. in the position where he was at okay no i'm mm. sorry but just there, yeah there, one 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 accusation you can you can make you can you can brush it off you can be like you could be like i don't i don't believe that's true whatever when when multiple people come at you with the same thing okay it's sorry you did it. <laughs> it's the same. It, multiple people aren't aren't that fucked up mm. to bring the same accusation against one guy. So it's and and yeah, I'm, you can try to put him back in the same spot. Okay, I'm I'm never gonna root for the guy again. It's never gonna happen. So it's one of those you turn him completely prick heel and make him act the way that he acts in real life, or you murder him off. You have the demon Finn Balor come out and just kill him. Mm. Yeah, so again, yeah, another story that's developing, but at least we have an accord this time. Uh, as far as what's happening on AEW Dynamite Kick, uh, we got a jam-packed roster. We've got an FTR heel turn. We've got. Is it really, is it really a heel turn when you go and attack Rock and Roll Express? <laughs> and and not even uh, personally. That. Personally, I've always felt like FTR were always heels, so it's never felt like a full oh, yeah. heel turn to me in the traditional sense. But again, I've just heard yourself and others refer to it as a heel turn so i, I guess I that's what this is yeah it's like i can't i'm i'm not gonna call it a heel turn because it's like they never stopped being who they were it's like they came in already pissed at the and and go and going against the top face tag team that they have even though they were facing it even though they were on the same side it's like you never you knew that FTR didn't want to be that didn't want to be didn't want to be on the same team as these guys 
So it's like, I don't call it a heel turn. I call it FTR just, just, just being who they are. Just, okay. Just, they attacked the Rock and Roll Express. Okay. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. We, it's, it's like they were talking it up all week on Twitter. This is the best thing that ever happened. This is the best thing that's ever going to happen. It's like, you knew from the moment that they announced this. <laughs> okay. That, that, shenanigans. That shenanigans were going to happen. And at the least, FTR was going to beat up somebody. And, and it's like, when when they attacked the Rock and Roll Express, it was one of those like, this isn't surprising. Of course they did. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> So Full it's more like, okay. N- now we're where we're supposed to be. Okay, the FTR has been fighting with the elite. They they've been on the same side as the elite, kind of. They've been on the same team, even though you know from the last few weeks fighting that it's been bullshit the entire time. Oh, I hurt my wrist. I'm going out, but it. it it, this is this is where it's always been going. So it's like, okay, we're here now, and and what's a great way to establish yourself? Okay, attack an uh, attack legends seems to be the thing. Okay, that's how Randy Orton got over. Okay, mm-hmm. that so now. So now this is how FTR is going to get over. Okay, mm-hmm. they attacked the Rock and Roll Express. They beat the shit out of them. And now you've got your... Uh, not, now you can actually go into your FTR versus Young Bucks. Mm-hmm. Yes. For ages. Deal. Okay, we're here now. It, it, that was the catalyst. We're here now. Cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> cool? Was it cool? Oh, it was cool, but I'm looking more forward to uh, having FTR versus Omega and Page first for the tag team titles and actually winning the tag team titles so we can get a Young Bucks versus FTR for the tag titles. Hmm. Especially since they actually didn't, since they actually have been work like having a storyline with with uh, Hangman Page with hmm. show. Continuing, it's like, oh yeah, we we were here to get your backs before Omega showed up and got your back. So planting those seeds of uh, the inevitable Omega Page versus FTR. Which, if there is anyone to take the tag team titles off uh, Hangman Page and Omega, I want it to be FTR to make for them be. to make that impact. Yeah, it will be FTR. There's no other team it can be. At this and, point. And, we, and then give us the young, the inevitable Young Bucks versus FTR for the tag team titles. Hell, hmm. make it a series. Hmm. Well, speaking Best of ever? inevitability, <laughs> and speaking of inevitability and titles, there is one thing I'm very curious and very excited for, and that is the fit. Now it's made official. MJF versus John Moxley. That's going to be for the AEW title at All Out. I've been waiting for this. I know a lot of other people have too. Speaking of inevitability, I'm just going to ask her right now: Is this when it, MJF gets the title? Is this here's it? The problem. Here, here's the problem: the aftermath of what happened. On the show, okay, he sent MJF set a petition to ban the paradigm shift. So it's like every time a move is banned, that person wins. Okay, so in my mind, I actually think the better move here, okay. I, I think the move here, this is fantasy booking. We're, we're going Atomic Bean Poles, fantasy booking corner. Everybody else has done it. It's my turn. <laughs> okay. 
I actually think Kenny Omega is the one to turn on oh, yeah. That's Hangman mm. Page. We get the cleaner. Okay. Mm. Because of the paradigm shift being banned, the paradigm shift will be banned. That's where this is leading to. Okay. The paradigm shift gets banned. John Moxley chokes MJF out at All Out. Okay. And and now we get it's been a year. Everything comes full circle. Okay. We get babyface John Moxley versus heel cleaner Kenny Omega for the title. Kenny mm-hmm. Omega gets his revenge. Gets the title at full gear. Hmm. Okay. And then you have the all, and then you have the feud between Kenny Omega and Hangman Page for the world, for the AEW world title. Hmm. Okay. Here's, here's because I was of the same mindset as you. Okay, before all this banning the finishing move and all that came out, I was like, okay, now's the time. They're going to have MJF. They're, they're going to have the title change. They're going to put it on MJF. Okay, that, that would be the standard mode of thought. Okay, but I, I, I feel like the banning of the finishing move, there, there's too much... Uh, I'm I'm not certain if it's the right time to go for MJF when you have a heel Kenny Omega in the distance, knowing what happened last year and the storyline that they've built around Moxley and Omega. And I don't know what's the bigger storyline at this point. And and I feel like they're building bigger to an Omega hangman page, like mega feud here. And, and that's going to need the title. So I think MJF, you hold off on him winning the title for a bit. I th- I think there's bigger storylines to do here. M- yeah. MJF will get his time and it'll be real soon, but I think with the uh, with the sanctions that will be put in place in this match that can- that are on the heels of the segment that they had on Dynamite. Dynamite kick. <laughs> On, on on the heels of that, I think they're telegraphing mm-hmm. here, and and I'm fine with that because I think bet I think the better move here, I think the better move is a switch around from last year's full gear and have it come full circle, and then you can move because that's gonna get the bigger. The the bigger fan reaction and the bigger ratings are going to come from Omega versus Hangman Page. Out of anything that MJF can do at this point. Unless they put him with Cody and that's not going to work. Because Cody's not going to do that at, at this point. So I'm, I'm going with... The, the segment itself, everything that's leading up to it, Okay, this is this is masterful right here. This is masterful heel work from MJF. But as as it's it's not gonna work out, Moxley's gonna choke him out. That's what all this build has been. All the all the all this build of John Moxley using submissions to beat his opponents. Okay, that's how this has been. MJF is going to think that he's going to get that he's going to be getting one over on John Moxley by taking away his finishing move 
and and then he's going to find out that John Moxley can f- finish him in other ways. Mm-hmm. Fool, kicking it over to you before we move on. Is this MJF's time, or is it not quite this time yet? It's actually kind of a hard question, because it, it, for me, it's kind of a yes and no, because, yeah, MJF is... He's still undefeated, correct? Yes. But it's still... It's still like technically, yeah, but it just still feels like he needs to do more to uh, he needs to like gain more, I guess, uh, what's the word, uh, bigger wins to uh, before he can go for the title. Although I kind of want to see like the big, the big like plot twist of like him uh, blocking the paradigm shift for, for Moxley to do it just so he can do it. And that's how he wins the title. Like mm. he just does a, like a low blow from with, with the ref's back turn. And then he hits the paradigm shift for the win just to, just to basically be that real, real dick heel move. But yeah, it's, it's just the thing. I, I don't know what, like, it's just more ends on that question. Is it still too early for him to get the belt? Because it's inevitable that he's going to get it. Because he deserves it. Man is just, he is just a phenomenal talent. But it's just, a, does, he, does he need it now? Or does he deserve to get it now is the question. Which well, my response I'm would be just be, I don't know. Well, I'm a lot. Well, 50 Allow me to take this deadlock, and again, real quick before we move on, I've heard it said that you have to get people at the peak of their interest no matter what it is. I have seen so many missed opportunities. I think we all have when it comes to how WWE books things where there's just a missed opportunity to elevate this guy here, Uh, another opportunity to elevate her here when they should have. Uh, I'm thinking Bray Wyatt's. There have been times when he he really could have been brought up to another level on various occasions, not just John Cena. And uh, I, long story short, I feel like this could be one of those things for MJF. Like as soon if they're going to inject him into the main event picture, they need to pull the trigger on him when the iron's hot. Or if if he just keeps losing, then it's gonna be a little too little too late in my humble opinion but so, here, he hasn't here, had a real let, loss let, yet to have that keep losing so let, I don't know put it to you, let me put it to you this way okay I think the better move okay have Omega beat Moxley have MJF be the one to beat Cody I'm you like, have I, him win the I TNT like, title? I I think you give him a run. But I I I feel like MJF should be like the constant foil for Cody. It's like, oh, Cody's beat all these people. Beat beat all these challengers for the TNT title. He's like, okay. Uh and then MJF is so I I think I think the better move here is I I think they they did the wrong move here by 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 having him do the petition to ban the move. Okay, because that's standard booking. That's standard booking. The person who has the move ban finds a different way to win. Mm. I did, so it's like so would I be impressed if they went the way of MJF actually winning that kind of that kind of way yes and I'd be happy for it but I'm like if you want him to be the actual dick that he is okay have him do what he's doing Okay, have him did what have him do what he did to Cody before. Have him do it again. So and you're suggesting him, just have give him the TNT title. 
Give him the TNT title. Give him a long run with it while Omega and Paige are doing their thing with the uh, with the world with the world heavyweight title. And then MJF can take it off of Paige because at that point Paige is gonna be the most overface in the company. Hmm. Hopefully by well, that point they have the crowd back and just get that real big boo with exactly. him doing it. That, that would be, yeah. That's another thing. You don't give you don't do a you don't do a big heel type title change. Okay, an MJF type title change. Okay, when when there's no people in the crowd. Okay, you need that you need that you need that factor. Mm. You you need that so it's like if MJF wins the title now, I don't know if it would have the same effect. Mm. As it would so, have otherwise. So, so that I, being said, I don't think, I don't think it hurts him mm. to lose here because it's like it's not at the peak of his popularity. At this point, he's talking to the audience at home and nobody else. Mm. So it's like when he's talking to people in the crowd, when he has a crowd, it's like that's the problem with Drew McIntyre right now. Okay, he has no crowd, so his title reign isn't hitting the way that it's supposed to be. Okay, you want MJF to have the same problem? Well, I think that's where we differ in opinions. Like, I, I don't necessarily believe it's going all going to hit the hit the same way necessarily. And when I say popularity I'm, or peak popularity, I'm not necessarily talking about fan reaction here. I'm talking about peak of interest like when we all know that he I'm I'm thinking of MJF as absolute top tier main event caliber talent uh, I almost see it in the same way that we tended to, to see the fiend and the universal title like with a with a character that's that strong in my mind I think if you put a character like that anywhere near the world title Chances are very likely that they should probably win it, or else the if they don't, then that could that could run into some problems. But again, that's just my opinion. But elsewhere, since you brought up the TNT title, we've got Mr. Brody Lee on deck for for the TNT title against Cody. Getting some pretty decent promo time, cutting an awesome promo for the TNT Championship. Uh, initial impressions, same deal. Uh, Brian, I think I got your impressions of what this means, but long story short, it, is this for it for the new T, a new TNT champion being crowned, or is this sort of a red herring and it's, it's going to go to someone else? Do you think? You you say your piece, yeah. Yeah, I've heard what's going. I've I've heard what's going around, but uh, it's it's like I don't I don't think it's the right time. Mm. So, I I would kind of be disappointed. In all honesty. Mm. Fool impressions on Mr. Brody Lee versus Cody for the TNT Championship. I'm on the complete opposite. And I would love to see Mr. Brody Lee win the title. <laughs> oh, uh, boy. Just, I think it's just we're gonna be stemming from the here, fact it's stem, it's just really stemming from just the fact that he uh, Brody Lee came, uh, still came off that big title loss, and he hasn't really had anything major to bounce back bounce back on, like. In a certain way, I could you could kind of throw that Bray Wyatt argument in with Brody Lee, where he I feel like him winning the title would be a a good way for him to really bounce back to make an impact. I mean, him have his thing with uh, Cole Cabana is one thing, but the fact that even the Dark Order itself is spread is kind of spreading all over the place when it comes to AEW. I feel like. Having him, having Mr. Brody Lee win a title 
would actually be a big benefactor for the Dark Order as a legit, excuse me, as a legit threat. Hmm. And I would just love, I would just want to see Brody Lee with a belt. I don't, I, I'll be, I'll be very happy with that one. Yeah, I'm honestly on the fence at this point. This is my 50 50 where I can, there's enough evidence to make me believe that, yeah, he might, but then again, he might not. Like, I, I, I've loved what they've been doing with the TNT championship, just independent talent um, on the roster and off, just getting all these title shots. It's very re- reminiscent of John Cena's U.S. title reign. But now I'm thinking, like, I'm going to say a strong maybe, but I admit that's only because I'm incredibly biased and I want to see Mr. Brody Lee have the championship and just have, like, open tryouts for the championship, just do, like, a Shang Tsung gimmick where they all try and fight fight just for a shot at Mr. Brody Lee. I guess I kind of want to... I guess I'll just end... Like since we're getting close to the ending of the episode, I kind of I'll yeah. throw my own scholars quick talk when it comes to talking with the TNT Championship because it's the TN the TNT Championship. Do you feel like that title should only be on the line on AEW Dynamite? Like, not put it on a pay per view. Like, have the title up for a yes. pay per view because it's the yeah. TNT. Have yes, it only absolutely. be defended on t- on TNT programming. Yes. Yeah. I. I See, that's I, a scholar's quick I, talk fool. I, I feel <laughs> that, to be fair, I, to be fair, I did only ask for a name, I, not for a whole like would it make sense. But anyway, yeah, I think that's go I on. I feel like that's where WCW went wrong with the TV title. So, so uh, yeah, I, I do believe that the TNT title should only be. Defended on TNT because hey, <laughs> it's in the name. <laughs> yeah. That being said, however, I'd like to again another scholar's quick talk, legit qu- quick talk this time before we head on out. Who do you want to see? Assuming Cody retains, who do you want to see? Def- Cody defend the TNT Championship against. Realistically, who do you want to see? You mean just take the title off him or just face him? Just face him in one of those open challenge style matches. Anyone from the independent scene or otherwise. Meadowlands Monster. Just good because answer. he's a good friend. He's, he's a, a friend good friend of, the of show. Us, so. <laughs> Yes. The Meadowlands Monster would be great. He's been he's been trying. He's been really trying to uh, answer the call. He's been sending messages to. He's been sending tweets to Cody. He's like, "Hey, man, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Call me. Give me Chris Hero. Ooh, Chris Hero. That, well, that's, that's a good, a good pick. That would be a good, that is one. A good one. Yeah, yeah. For me, there's two names that come to mind above all others that are on, they're actively wrestling right now. Uh, first one being Casanova Valentine. He's sort of a next generation uh, death match guy. Looks very much like the a lo- the love child of Mick Foley and Bruiser Brody, and the other one being Danhausen. If they g- gave him uh, the nod to Warhorse, I think they could d- give the nod to Danhausen. I think that would be a fun I'm, one. I'm pretty right. sure that'll happen in the next couple weeks. Well, only t- like so many other things in the world of wrestling, only time will tell. Unless Brody Lee wins. Unless Brody Lee wins, of course. Any he, Brody Lee wins. Defended every week. That's not going to happen. That's mm. it. He's People a have to earn. He had, they have to earn the right to face Mr. Brody Lee. Yeah. He's a bad guy. They don't defend their titles every week. You know this, Jeff. <laughs> That's yeah, it. I'm just their saying there's enough. Month. There's just enough that makes me believe that, you know what? Maybe this could be interesting, if depending on how they execute it. But I believe. Oh, don't put that out there. Don't put that out in the ether. <laughs> but that's enough for one one night, and that's enough for one show. So now is the time in the show where we turn it over to you, our wrestling compatriots in the viewing world. What do you think of this week in wrestling? Favorite Kamala 
uh, memories. What's going on with the NXT, TNT, all the Wednesday night titles? What's it, where are they all going to go? We want to hear from you. So wherever you are all across the internet, Facebook, uh, YouTube comments, and our personal favorite, the Twitter machines, we want to hear from you. So if you are on Twitter, you can also follow us at our starting on our main page at Scholars OW for all the latest episode uploads. You can also check us out on our personal Twitter accounts if you want to get involved with us personally and join the conversation directly. Fool, where can they reach you? You can reach me at the Avataric. And Scholar Brian, where can they reach you? You can reach me no longer looking like a mountain man at Atomic Beanpole. And you can reach me at I'm Robbie Rage. Join the conversation, and especially now, because next week, it's SummerSlam, baby. But then again, you already knew that, because you already knew who we are. We are the Scars of Wrestling, and you have just been schooled. You're welcome. You're welcome. See you next week for SummerSlam Predictions. Thank <laughs> you.